darling. There was an energy that Philip would get. I remember Philip would be so excited about every session. There was just a vitality in the room that was would lift you off of your feet. And also, there'd be so many players, and the sound would be so huge. I mean, it was definitely that wall of sound was really, it was really there. I never was in the studio that there were any different guys. It was the same guys always. sound was the gold star echo chamber. So well, it was wall-to-wall -wall musicians, first of all. Yeah, that's true. Most people use the four-piece rhythm section. He had four guitars, or six, or seven. There were four pianos always, one upright bass, one fender bass. I mean, there was only one drum, usually. Fifteen people playing percussion instruments. In a very small room. Yeah. Not a small room, but an average room. And a huge echo chamber that Gold Star was famous for. Ceramic, that was the wall of Ceramic walls. One, two, three. Every evening when the sun goes down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The wall of sound of Phil Spector is more like a lost feeling. It's heavy on you've lost that love and feeling. And it was a, uh, he used the echo so much and it was swimming all the time. In spite of the baffles, we all leaked into each other's mics, just enough to give it the combination of leakage and echo. Plus, we were tired of, but by the 30th take, you're tired, you know, so it had a real relaxed feeling on, on his hits. You've lost that love and feel, and now it's gone. the most played song of all time. Oh, I believe it. Most played yeah. record of all time. They were the whole sound that Philip had. Philip was also really, really superstitious, and he didn't, he wanted those guys, and he always wanted those guys, you know? He felt secure, only secure when he was playing with those guys. Same musicians, same engineers, same studio, same probably brand of tape. Yeah, probably. Um, it was just a thing that he figured if he if he didn't do it that way, it wouldn't be a hit. He was probably right. He was probably right, and we're grateful for that. <laughs> you know, Philip was walking in a different universe than everybody else, and so in his mind, it was all him, you know, and the guys were just some sort of an extension of what he couldn't do. Phil would never record anything for the first three hours. I mean, he worked these guys so that they weren't playing individualistic. They were too tired. And so they, they just melded into this, this wall of sound. Phil leaned on Howard very, very heavy about how to play and just kept on it and on it and on it and wasn't satisfied or something and made him kept playing over and over and over and over again for hours until Howard's hands were just a mass of pain. No, 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 this way. Howard says, look, man, if I can't play it and you know what it is, why don't you play it? Howard Roberts the only guy that I ever saw walk out of a session where he just put everything down, picked up his guitar and his amp, and he walked out. He said, I've had enough of this. He was very demanding. I had no problem with Phil. I guess it's because he knew that I always knew that I wasn't the original drummer because if I, if I had a problem, I'd have walked out. Who was he going to get? He'd already, you know, had his argument with Hal. He, maybe Hal wouldn't have came back. So, so we got along fine. Well, they made fun of him all the time, but they really liked him. I think they really respected him. They thought he was nuts, which, of course, he was. But I think they always looked forward to it because it was always going to be something really cool. It was like a total friendship thing, too, because they would come in and they would be talking about, you know, what'd you do on the golf course or, you know, that someone had this car. Or so there was always a Mad Magazine, too, being passed around that somebody brought, you know. I was in awe of them because of Phil Spector. That It took me a couple of times to get used to, you know, being with the guys and all that. Any memories of being my baby the first time you heard it? Oh, I pulled my car over the side of the road and said, what am I listening to here, you know? I couldn't believe it. I instantly wrote, Don't Worry Baby, after I heard that, yeah. I was so inspired, I couldn't believe it.
by the time we got to River Deep Mountain High, we all thought that was going to be a giant of a hit. There's another wall of sound hit, but it flunked. <laughs> It, 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 it was a big hit in the UK, but in the USA, it was his first downer. And it's like, okay, that style is going then. It's a wall sound was over then. 